Welcome, my friend. Welcome. My name is Drake, and this is Touching the Edge. Thank you for joining the conversation. So I want to frame the conversation on something simple today, and that is, imagine this. What if you were a magician? What if you were like Gandalf, you know, from the Lord of the Rings, or some great magician, someone who had the power to just conceive of something and make it become real? Wow, wouldn't that be something? You know, uh, Kat, who is one of our great friends, she says here, I love when you talk about words and how important they are in framing our situation. I love when you talk about words and how important they are in framing our situation. I really want to suggest that it's really important for us to really take a look at words. Words have a magnetism. They have a power of the, each and of themselves, of, the, of their own. Words have the, the power to draw what their essential meaning is to your life. So if you're using a word and you don't really understand it, or if you're hearing other people use words and don't really understand it, sometimes we are taking a framing that's not the underlying meaning of the word. And you as a magician, and I really want to encourage you to really see yourself as a magician, it becomes really important for you to see what these words mean. Let's take a look at some of these words. So the word believe, believe, I believe this. You know, you hear people so passionate about their beliefs. You have p people willing to die for their beliefs. In the course of my life, I'm 60 years old, I saw the beginning and the rise of, of talk radio, which is just a stimulation of your beliefs. It's about stimulating what you believe and getting so, so steeped in what you believe that those who do not believe what you believe become the enemy. That was one of the words that was originally how people would frame the devil in Christianity. That was the enemy. So when someone doesn't go along with what you believe, they become the enemy. And the enemy in our consciousness, self versus other, is evil. So the word believe, what does it mean? Be, to be or not to be. We want to understand that to be, when we invest being, connected with a word, that that means that we are connecting it to our essential self. So what you believe is connected to who you feel you are. Leave. What does that word mean? Believe. Leave. What does that mean? It means to love. So when you believe what you are saying, this is what you love. So when people are talking about their beliefs, they are not so much talking about what is as what they want to be. And of course, being so vested in what they want to be, when you have people so vested in fear, they become completely vested in what they want to be. If it's not what they want to be, they feel completely at risk. So we want to understand there's a difference between belief and reality. Yes, we believe. And yes, we believe strongly, but I want to suggest that we step into perception and recognize that when you perceive something, you are expressing what you believe, but you're also allowing other people to be, have contact with what they believe. You actually allow them to be in contact with their perception. We have to have a way to be strong in our perceptions and allow other people to have theirs as well. And you know what? When you allow other people to have their perception, you become much more persuasive. So that's just an example. There are so many other words like that. So many other words that if we pay attention to them, we actually find out something important about what we're really talking about. Many other words, words like sadness, have hidden meaning. You know, words, you know, the word sadness, for instance, supposedly comes from a Latin word that meant to be full. So sadness uh, was related to satisfaction or satiation. So recognizing that word sadness is not the same as the word despair. When we recognize sadness as fullness, what we're really saying is something we really loved has now come to an end and we're sad about it which is different than expressing despair. So understand that sadness, if we really understand its meaning, is really about joy. 
It's about having the ability to be completely open and not just stuck on what we don't want. There are many other words as well. Words that actually, if you understand their true meaning, can actually connect you to an expansion rather than being limited by those words. So please listen to what you say. Remember that what you say is vitally important. And what you say, there is someone listening to every single word and taking what you say literally. Realize that the other person you're talking to is not the main audience. The real individual who is the main audience of what you say is your deeper self. So don't talk about things like having seen your moments. Don't talk about your bad knee. Understand that how you frame things can change the whole of your reality. So thank you so much, Kat, for asking this question. Let us know what's working for you. Please share these videos and let other people know about them so that we can build this circle and build it up to 600, 700, 1,000 different people subscribing. We can build this circle together. I'm going to ring the bell. I'm going to ask you to listen carefully. Here we go. You know, we want to understand, we in Minnesota, it's so important for us to get light. And I want to suggest to you that the most important light, at least equally important, is not just the light from the sun, but the light that shines from you. When you are open to your own light, when you're delighted, that means light coming from inside out. The world is a different place. I bring my hands together and I bow to you because I have such tremendous faith in, in our shared humanity. Namaste, my friend. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great day.